Welcome aboard. This is Lynn Bacani, your host on Filipino Seafarers, Crisis and Coping. But in a world's webinar on challenges, proving pandemic and geopolitics. The past two years were tough years. Economic recession is all over, but our seafarers silently continue to sail over blue waters to secure the logistics chain of the world. As we firm up being the world's mining capital, we spotlight how vital Filipino seafarers are for sustainable shipping. How do we turn crisis into opportunities? We start our critique with views from a leader who critically listen and act on the stakeholders' viewpoints. The administrator of the Maritime Industry Authority Vice Admiral Robert Empedrad. Administrator Empedrad, please. Good afternoon, Lynn. Um, uh, welcome to the Marina World uh, webinar. And um, it's an honor and privilege to be invited uh, to uh, discuss uh, with experts um, what is happening in the world today, especially our uh, seafaring industry. Uh, like to express to to welcome and acknowledge uh, Dr. Conrad Ocasar and Captain Frosi and uh, Sir Jay Bobera. Um, so uh, it's an honor and privilege to present to you a simple brief prepared by the Maritime Industry Authority on what's going on as far our as our seafaring industry is concerned. Let me now proceed. Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, inviting me to be part of this webinar and. Uh, I will be presenting a, what is happening now as far as the Filipino seafarers is concerned. So this is the presentation outline. So we'll be discussing the latest statistics of our uh, employment of our Filipino seafarers and what are the marina initiatives to um, not only to strengthen the competence of our seafarer, but uh, um, what has been done to speed up the processes of their uh, licenses prior to their deployment. And a, a few discussion on the EMSA updates because this is, I believe, a very important uh, um, a program of uh, the marina uh, to address uh, the issues of EMSA and then uh, the crew change, change hubs that uh, has been um, in establish, established by uh, the Department of Transportation to speed up the uh, crew chains of our uh, seafarers, um, not only Filipino seafarers, but foreign seafarers. Next slide, please. This is the latest statistics of our Filipino seafarers. Uh, next slide. So if you uh, noticed um, in 2018, there are 250,000, 282,000. This is uh, data coming from the OWA, but I believe um, I believe that uh, the employment, the, the, the figure is much, much higher than what is uh, shown here based on OWA. I believe the, before uh, the pre-pandemic, before pandemic, uh, we have more than 400,000 deployed uh, Filipino seafarers. Uh, but uh, in 2020, you notice it went down to um, almost half the, of uh, our deployment. And then in 2021, um, it went back and it's uh, slowly going back to the pre-pandemic. Um, and then uh, in 2022, uh, there are uh, 77,000, but most of the bulk of the deployment usually uh, uh, is uh, on the, the third and fourth quarter of, of the year. So we expect this to expand further in the 2022 figures. So, with a total of 975, almost a million uh, deployment or employment uh, uh, over the period of uh, five years or four years and six months. But this figure, as I said, is much, much lower uh, than what uh, we have in, uh, in as far as the marina is concerned. Next slide, please. Uh, and this is the, um, the detailed um, deployment of our seafarers as far as uh, the officers and the ratings are concerned. Next slide. 
for the dem dem domestic um, uh, COC uh, that were uh, uh, given uh, during the period, um, you'll notice that uh, it was heavily affected in uh, 2020, but slowly it's coming back to uh, the pre-pandemic figures. Uh, in 2021, we have 8,538 um, as an increase of uh, the 2020 figures. Uh, but uh, I'm sure that the 2022 figures is uh, going back to uh, the pre-pandemic uh, figures. Next slide, please. So this is the number of uh, processed CVs or overseas employment contracts. So you notice that this is uh, more than uh, what is uh, the figure of the OWA. In 2018, there are 505 uh, processed uh, CVs-based uh, overseas employment, 526 in 2019, and then it went down to 2020 and it's going back in 2021 and uh, if you notice uh, in 2022 um, un until today there are already 259,000 so we expect this to double and even higher than the pre-pandemic figures so um, if we base it we, if we base the deployment on, on this process con contract then um, it, the figures should be higher next slide please these are Marina's initiatives um, that uh, we have been doing in the past uh, two years. Uh, the, first ones, the first one is the issue ones of the digital service certificates through MISMO. I think we are the first uh, country that, that is doing this, meaning um, if the license of the seafarers has been processed by Marina, they can uh, print their licenses wherever they are they can print this in their homes they can print this uh, um, in the place or wherever they are uh, and this is qr coded so hindi uh, na yung pumupunta pa sila this is not uh, it's no longer that they have to go to marina and get their licenses but now they can print it anywhere so this is a uh, the first time that we did this in uh, in the in the philippines Next slide, please. Another initiative is the competency review portal. Uh, this is for me is a um, very significant project of Marina. Uh, what we did is uh, we opened up a uh, portal wherein the seafarers can access through MISMU and they can review the questions that are, uh, that will be uh, the, where we will be getting the examinations when they take the exam so they can review this at home they can review it uh, whenever they are in the ship or wherever they are they can um, do the review and then when they take the examinations um, out, for example out of the two to two thousand questions um, a, at random the questions will be coming from there uh, we, we get 100 questions and they will take the exam and um, if they are able to study well, I'm sure they will pass this one without going to a review center. We're in um, some of the review centers uh, get leakage of uh, examination and this is not happening now uh, because uh, there will be no more leakage because when they sit in front of the computer and take the exam randomly, for example, out of 2000 question, 100 question will be um, uh, randomly selected and they can take the exam. So there will be no more leakage. There is no need for them to go to a review center to pay that much and uh, spend much time to um, review so that they will pass the exam. The uh, objective of the CRP is um, first, it's free of charge and the seafarers can review at the comfort of, uh, of their homes, of their own homes. And they will be more equipped and ready for examination. They will. Um, uh, and enhance their knowledge um, and um, of course uh, this will be this will impact the uh, the review centers that are available for them uh, this will not stop them from uh, still going to the review center but um, it's their choice choice but they can go to the comp competency review portal review and uh, most based on records, uh, those who reviewed through the CRP 
has a high rate of uh, passing. Uh, so, uh, so this is to me is a very significant project of the Maritime Industry Authority. Uh, next slide, please. And then, of course, we have continued to extend the validity of their certificate uh, because most Filipino seafarers continues to extend their stay aboard ship. Uh, the foreign, their foreign counters counterpart uh, goes down after 10 months but for our filipino seafarers they remain to they they chose to stay longer on board uh, even to the up to the period of uh, 16 or 18 months so we have to extend their certificates uh, because it's expiring while they are on board ship so uh, we are we're uh, continuously doing this next slide please And then, uh, of course, for the sake of our seafarers, um, in line with the pandemic, uh, so that for us to be very humane, our the marina uh, will issue SRB at no cost uh, to the applicant if it, if it is their first time. And for uh, the renewal, it will be fifty percent discount. Um, so we they pay less now uh, than in uh, previously. Next slide. Next slide, please. And then, uh, of course, the reduction of fees of COCs and COPs. Uh, uh, Marina will continue to um, alleviate the uh, the plight of the seafarers at this time of pandemic. Um, Marina is their uh, their support, and we will continue to provide selfless service to them. Next slide. And uh, let me now proceed to the EMSA updates, which I believe very important. Uh, this is the um, easy compliance timeline. The European Commission should have uh, made the decision in April when the Committee of, on Safety of Seas uh, met, but they did not make a decision with the EMSA. So the next meeting will be in November. So maybe uh, I believe they will uh, then decide uh, if they will withdraw their support to RC Ferris or not. But um, in the meantime, we will continue to uh, implement or execute uh, whatever we put in the strategic response to EMSA. They are, asking, they are not asking us to submit an update, but um, I will insist on uh, submitting updates until they make a decision. Um, so uh, this is very transparent. It's open in the website. Everybody can see this one. And everybody can critique whatever we did uh, in response to EMSA until uh, there will be a decision that will be made by the European Commission. Next slide, please. So these are uh, the, our action on the Philippine measures that we have submitted to EMSA. Uh, on the left side are uh, seven major uh, action plans that has been completed. Um, the first four is in uh, the first three is in relation to the good uh, to the governance of the maritime higher education institution, and um, the next uh, four uh, bears on the uh, quality um, procedures of uh, the maritime industry authority. And on the right side are the ongoing. Um, uh, execution of uh, the strategic response. Uh, we will be coming, take note of number two. Uh, we are coming up with the course package of the second year and third year level of the new curriculum because we are coming up with the new curriculum and we will be implementing this uh, this year. The, it's starting with the first year level, which is already uh, completed. Uh, we already conducted the orientation to the Maritime Higher Education Institution. And um, they will start the first year level of the new curriculum uh, by uh, the start of the academic year this year. And then um, number four is capacity building workshops. The IMO has already conducted three capacity building workshop to the Maritime Industry Authority. And two will be conducted this year. So we have a, a strong collaboration with the IMO. Um, we requested the Secretary General to uh, help us and um, uh, his heart is with the Filipino seafarers that's why that's why he already approved the uh, the conduct of two more capacity capacity training to our uh, the personnel of the maritime industry authority and then um, uh, if, if you notice the 
conduct of the institutionalization of the national maritime uh, admission exam. Um, this is because uh, the MHEI keep on enrolling uh, future seafarers and it reached as high as 100,000 uh, enrollees, but uh, we can only send 15 to 20,000 on board for their OBT. So it's not working. That's why we have to control this one so that uh, um, uh, we, we cannot keep on enrolling people and then we cannot send them on board training uh, aboard ship. And then the imposition of moratorium for the opening of new uh, maritime um, education um, or a higher education is also very important uh, because this is the issue that was raised by EMSA. The, they are saying that we have so many schools and we keep on opening schools that are not uh, competent and are not uh, um, that did not meet the standard of the SDSW convention. So uh, we have imposed a moratorium uh, for the next five years not to open any schools. And then, uh, of course, we will be looking at the carrying capacity competition so that um, the schools will no longer enroll more than what they can uh, train, what they can accommodate, or what they can educate. And then um, the capacity building for the instructor of MHAI are also important. And um, Marina will, um, will take uh, the cadres or the, will, will uh, be the major uh, agency that will uh, conduct the capacity building of the instructors in collaboration with the Commission of Higher Education. Next slide, please. Now we, we proceed to the crew change hubs. Um, just recently, um, the uh, Department of Transportation activated uh, additional crew change hub. It's, it's five before, but now um, it's, it increased to 12. Next slide. Um, next slide, please. So um, I think this is 12 right now, uh, but uh, based on the screen, there are uh, 11 uh, crew chain hubs. So we increase the number of crew chain hubs. So if a particular ship goes uh, pass through Mindanao, they don't have to go to Manila to do crew chain hub. They just have to go to, uh, to Davao. And if uh, a ship pass through, uh, the Patanes is straight. Uh, they don't have to go to, uh, as I said again, uh, to Manila to do crew change hub, but they can go to uh, to La Union. They can they can go to Batan. They can go to uh, Batangas. They can go to Subig. So uh, this is a good development uh, because the, as some of countries are closing their ports for crew change hub, we open our ports, and this is even post the pandemic. Even after uh, the pandemic is gone, these crew chains hubs will remain to be open for crew chains um, because the, um, certainly because uh, we have uh, a lot of Filipino seafarers on board uh, ships uh, all over the world. Next slide, please. So th that's our presentation and uh, we are ready to um, answer any question or reaction uh, from uh, the panel. Thank you very much. Our primary guest, Marina Administrator Robert M. Pedrat. He is joined by our distinguished panelists, Dr. Conrad Oka, President, Associated Marine Officers and Siemens Union of the Philippines, AMUSUP. Mr. Jay Babera, Vice President, OSM Philippines Crewing Operations. Captain Fauzi Fradi, Group Director, Crewing and Training, Columbia Ship Management Limited. Let's start with Dr. Oka. Your thoughts, please, or any rejoinder on the Administrator Empedrad's presentation. Uh, thank you very much, Lynn, and a very pleasant good afternoon to everybody and all those who are watching on uh, whatever portal uh, you are watching on. <laughs> so good afternoon here in the Philippines. Maybe good morning to you, Captain. I don't know. I'm not sure. So... Um, we're very happy and very glad that uh, the Admiral has presented a, a good, a very optimistic picture of uh, life ahead for Filipino seafarers. But uh, of course, we still have to do a lot of um, things for our Filipino seafarers. But I, I guess it's a start, whatever I, Admiral Almendrat has been saying. 
And uh, as you well know, there is a very large, big shortage of officers, um, as, a, as stated by the PIMCO reports. Not, uh, I think there are around thousands of uh, tens of thousands of shortages, and uh, and really the whatever we are doing with for EMSA in uh, increasing the competency of our mar maritime educational institutions is uh, really a big uh, big accomplishment thanks to our to the good admiral. So uh, the the competency portal also review portal is also. I welcome a welcome development because we have been also we have been asking or we when we had the the exam in our in our premises we were also asking for something like this so that uh, our our seafarers can review and uh, easily review the questions itself and not rely also as you said admiral on uh, review centers Extension of certificates was, uh, especially COCs and COPs, was a very welcome development, especially during the crisis. So I thank you for that, Admiral. And uh, yeah, uh, the EMSA is really a big challenge for us here in the industry. And I do hope that uh, the Admiral, I, when I saw the presentation, I'm sure the Admiral is uh, doing his best and the Marina is doing its best so that we cannot go out of the list of the EMSA list. And uh, well, the last, present, well, last presentation of Admiral was about the crew change hub. And it was a very welcome decision by the government to become a crew change hub center really for, especially for uh, Filipino seafarers. We experienced that firsthand and we were, uh, we joined and we joined the Admiral and we joined other government agencies in, uh, in making this really su successful. We even had a um, safe corridor safe corridor program together with IMEC and ITF so that we can deploy Filipino seafarers during that time who are COVID free. And it is very welcoming to note also that Admiral uh, Marina and Shed are working together now. I mean, you know, before we had news before of a very, of, uh, of, we had news that they weren't really working together, but now uh, all government agencies really involved in CPR should uh, really work hard and work together because uh, right now there is a big, as, as uh, Lina was saying, there's a big crisis right now. And um, then we can always stay, turn this uh, crisis into opportunity. And it, is the, and it is with the cooperation of all government agencies involved, tripartism, the, uh, the management, labor, and government working together hand in hand really to, um, to, to make our seafarers the top, the most, uh, demand, the most in demand seafarers in the world. So thank you very much, Admiral, for that presentation. And hopefully that it will continue on because uh, as you know, we will have a new administration coming in and, uh, we do, and hopefully that they will continue your projects, uh, Admiral. And well, hopefully you become the marine administrators. We, we need continuity really in the projects and uh, everything that we are doing right now for the sake of Philippine receivers. Thank you very much, Lynn. From the perspectives of uh, ship managers and crewing managers, uh, may we hear from Mr. Jay Babera of Western Philippines. Thank you and good afternoon, Lynn. Uh, to uh, Vice Admiral Integrat and to fellow um, panelists and to the uh, viewers all over the world. Good afternoon. I have two um, reactions. First is uh, with regards to the presentation of Admiral on the reduction of number of deployments uh, during the pandemic. This is definitely felt um, by uh, particularly agencies who were deploying um, seafarers uh, to the passenger uh, night vessels because for those uh, that were um, travelers or, or traveling uh, worldwide when it comes to the, the reduction of number of deployment also this has also it also has an impact to uh, the seafarers who lost their uh, jobs and uh, this, the families are also suffering when it comes to uh, the loss of employment for their seafarers. 
so I, I think that um, now there is a very good uh, direction uh, based on the presentation of uh, uh, Admiral Integra uh, that uh, we are again going up uh, in the figures. Uh, hopefully that this continues to uh, be so. Second is um, correlating the challenges that we have been experiencing uh, during the pandemic. Um, of course, our organization in OSM, we have uh, created our COVID task force uh, to address uh, the challenges on the change um, related to visa application, expiring certificates on board, extended contracts on board, and um, port restrictions, flight availability, uh, to name among others. Uh, locally, um, I, I also would like to mention especially the uh, organization that we have uh, uh, created, uh, the Association of Licensed uh, Money Agencies, that has been very active in coordinating with uh, different uh, government agencies to also help in addressing um, the COVID situation uh, in the Philippines. So during the, cha the uh, challenges or food changes, um, we also face the uh, isolation of our seafarers, prolonged isolation of the seafarers in the quarantine facility. Um, just to imagine, you know, staying in a uh, hotel quarantine for uh, a big number of days while waiting for um, the flight availability for the opening up of the ports, uh, joining port. Um, these are really not only challenging for the company, for the charterers, um, because of course, but it is definitely very challenging for the seafarers and its families and their families. That's why, that's why in OSM, we also help in uh, organizing different activities for our seafarers who are on quarantine, like the physical activities, yoga, Zumba. Uh, even social nights in karaoke. And uh, we also had uh, health talks, Sunday mass. Um, we issue them with OSM care kit that uh, really contains um, materials that they could use while they are uh, in the quarantine facility, like the support, uh, breathing materials and puzzles. And uh, I, I uh, also would like to share that due, despite the pandemic, we continued in reaching out to the families of the seafarers who are also affected um, by having um, activities uh, in our online portal uh, through the so social media, um, Seafarers Family Club Facebook uh, group uh, in OSM. And uh, I believe that uh, this has helped in uh, having our seafarers be able to understand what's the situation and for, for them also to uh, be more cooperative. So in this period, we also experience that the, the presentation, that, that the ones that uh, has been mentioned by, uh, Ad, by Admiral Integrad, um, also help in addressing the concerns of our seafarers, expiring certificates. Um, they have been issued extension uh, even when, when they were on board um, for the difficulty in crew change, um, we have opened up uh, several uh, crew change hubs here in the Philippines. Um, issuance of uh, digital certificates also helped in reducing, if not totally eliminating, the exposure of our seafarers going to uh, the office or going out of their homes. And also for the uh, competency review portal, uh, where our seafarers no longer need to go to a review center, they can they can uh, do the the uh, review at their own uh, convenience for free. I think that's uh, uh, also one thing that I, I would like to highlight. Um, overall, you no, know, uh, I, I uh, also would like to share that uh, OSM has been recently awarded by. Um, Safety for C, this 2022 uh, management award um, for its crew uh, welfare category. I think this is a very good uh, testament 
of how our organization has been coping up and trying to uh, not just say it, but also doing it to our seafarers, to our family, to the family of the seafarers, and also uh, helping our industry through the help of our organization, ALMA, and of course, the, the agencies, uh, particularly Marina. So uh, a good job to everyone and thank you so much. And now let's move to Captain Fauci or Pradeep. Your thoughts, please. Hi, hi, Lynn. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, uh, Vice Admiral uh, Robert and also Dr. Conrad and all colleagues here. Uh, nice to see those whom I met before. Uh, also, a pleasure for me really to speak at uh, Marino World. Uh, thank you, Lynn, for the invitation. Really nice and appreciated. Uh, as you know, we at Columbia Ship Management, we employ thousands of uh, Filipino seafarers. Uh, since more than 40 years. Uh, we, we've been traditionally very, very loyal and very faithful to our crew as much as our crew were loyal to us as well. And uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, emotional connections to the Philippines uh, because th th this being uh, the Filipino seafarers, our Filipino seafarers, and also the Philippines as a country, government and organizations uh, have supported us for in many, many years for, for many um, situations. Uh, so uh, generally, the word I want to start with is, uh, to me, the Philippines has always been an example of resilience and uh, in general, in, in, in everything, not only about seafarers. Uh, and I admire that personally, and also as uh, representing my company. Uh, in, Amazingly, the Filipino seafarers, they have always been also a very high example of uh, resilience, discipline, and competence. Uh, the number, of course, in thousands, I, can, uh, I can't envy <laughs> uh, the Vice Admiral for, for his position, because managing uh, thousands of uh, such large number of seafarers, uh, it's really a huge challenge. And of course, it's not easy uh, considering the volume and, and the, 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 um, the extent of these operations is not easy to pass EMSA or any other inspection. Uh, I, can, I fully understand that uh, challenge. And um, I'm extremely happy that finally a response has been made uh, and all efforts have been done uh, in the right direction. I think also that uh, the Philippines in general with all its um, uh, agencies working together uh, has been one of the leading countries in actually proving that seafarers are key workers, but not only saying it, but by doing things. Unlike, unlike many other uh, places where we heard a lot of uh, talks, but we didn't see a lot of actions, uh, the Philippines have been uh, a, great, a great help to the industry, a great solution to arrange crew changes. And, and on the top, in the peak of COVID, the pandemic, uh, we managed to keep our ships running without trouble, without problems, uh, honestly, despite all the challenges which were there, there was no any major or significant impact uh, due to deployment of uh, seafarers. And as my colleagues were saying, I think the drop of the number was mainly because of some industries which were hit uh, more than uh, any issue coming from the administration side. So the Crew Changes Hub is an amazing, fantastic achievement. Uh, I think we should all be very proud of it. And uh, thank you very much for anyone who was involved in, in that uh, solution, uh, especially the administration. Uh, what I would also like to say that the, um, of course, the quarantine was uh, a very tough uh, solution for, for, the, uh, for our seafarers, it's not easy. I've been myself in quarantine a couple of times traveling. It's an extremely difficult moment. Um, again, uh, despite all the resilience, uh, we need to, we had to support our Filipino seafarers by offering mental health solution. I think that's, that's actually applicable for any nationality uh, uh, all around the world. Mental health today is, is uh, becoming more and more a mandatory topic to talk about. Uh, is no longer a taboo and we, we should really address openly and uh, uh, with positive attitude. But also the welfare in general. Uh, as Columbia Ship Management, 
uh, we definitely think that welfare is connected to safe uh, operations of the ships. So uh, as we all know the, the saying, happy crew, happy ship, it's, uh, it's still uh, uh, correct and still uh, important to ensure that. So we offer our crew uh, many welfare solutions, among them free internet all time so they can connect to their loved ones. Uh, but also, um, like many of other uh, uh, friends and colleagues, we also offer uh, some uh, competitions. Uh, fitness equipment was extremely important for our young seafarers. This is something I wanted really to share. Uh, almost having a gym in, in the ship now today is, is more important than having a galley. So it's, uh, it's very important for them. Uh, the young seafarers now, they are also more concerned about their nutrition and uh, what kind of food they get. Uh, so for that, we have a solution called the uh, One Care Solution, where we, we really attach uh, on a hol holistic approach uh, about the welfare of the seafarers. I would also like to thank everyone involved in the vaccination campaign. That was a fantastic and amazing achievement. I, I could not believe this is, was like a miracle, uh, what, has, what has happened. Uh, despite the shortage of vaccinations, uh, vaccines in the beginning, which is the fault of nobody, uh, we as Columbia Ship Management, we contributed and we also uh, provided vaccines to the crew by ourselves. Uh, but the efforts which were done by AMOSOP are, 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 are great and amazing. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Oka. This is, uh, this is really fantastic achievement. I, I don't know any other example. Uh, it's really none to, uh, uh, there is no any other example like that. Uh, so well done today. We, we are having 100% of our Filipino crew vaccinated on board the ships. Uh, all the uh, episodes, so all the fears we had uh, in the last year uh, with COVID are, are now kind of history. Uh, we also think that uh, uh, the industry in general, has, as we do also in Columbia Ship Management, uh, have to support the community in Philippines, not only the seafarers. Uh, so whenever, whenever there, is a, there is a need, like we've seen it with the Typhoon uh, Odette or Ray, uh, I think ship managers, manning agencies, and, and the maritime industry have to support the community and have to be there and to show uh, recognition and uh, gratitude to the efforts which were done by the Filipino seafarers, and, but also the, their communities who are supporting them uh, to sail and stay abroad for very long contracts. Uh, that, that's also uh, very important. Last but not least, just to add one uh, small comment, uh, I very, very much happy and appreciate the digitalization and the modernization which uh, PUA is, is implementing is, is really uh, great. Uh, I hope that um, in the future, uh, perhaps would be more relaxation with regards to the um, manning agencies regulations, uh, so that also can uh, facilitate uh, the uh, for the industry to to have the business uh, running smoother. Uh, as now we know that in the Philippines uh, we cannot mix crew from different agencies and uh, some specific laws in the Philippines, which which I fully appreciate the history and where this is coming from. But looking forward to the future, maybe in some few years time, we can, uh, we can relax a bit uh, these kind of regulations. Thank you very much. We're beginning to receive uh, questions from our participants. Uh, but first, uh, let's uh, uh, ask uh, Administrator Empedrad your reaction, please. Uh, well, uh, I am overwhelmed by the comments of our uh, panels, and um, it only shows that they understand and they, they, they are aware of Marina is doing to ensure that our seafarers are readily be available for deployment. Uh, I saw a question a while ago uh, about the impact of uh, the war in Russia and Ukraine, and of course, uh, what's going on in China today. Uh, when they close, they close their ports for uh, crew chains. So I think these are, these are opportunities for our Filipino seafarers. Uh, in 2021, uh, the report of UNTAD, I believe uh, we continue to be, we were number one still uh, as far as uh, producing seafarers is concerned uh, worldwide. So uh, the, the intention and the goal of Marina is to continue to, uh, for the Philippines to be the number one uh, producing manpower professionals uh, all over the world. So it, that's our uh, goal. And uh, we hope that we are doing uh, our share well to ensure that our, our seafarers are uh, readily available for deployment. 
uh, there is there is a number of requirements of uh, officers uh, employment um, uh, based on the report and uh, we have available um, um, officers for deployment as well we have uh, as i said uh, in in previous presentation we have 900,000 uh, uh, filipino seafarers on our data and uh, on at any one time there are 450,000 that are deployed so if um, if uh, ship still needs more officers, we have available officers. Um, they can they can ask us. We have the the, the licensed managed manning agencies that can provide uh, readily available Filipino seafarers for deployment. So uh, these are all opportunities, and um, and uh, and we are ready. We are ready to send our uh, seafarers um, uh, uh, as soon as called by our ship owners around the world. Our participants keep on uh, sending your messages or questions. Uh, we'll just take a short break. We'll continue our dialogue. And, uh, Administrator Empadrad in an open dialogue with majors of the industry to recognize problems and consider solutions. Let's uh, read the messages from our participants. From uh, Maragtas or uh, professor of uh, University of the Philippines, Diliman. From Noy Amante, congratulations to the Marina for the AMSA response and other action initiatives such as digital access and certification. Questions to Marina Vice, Empedrad, uh, Vice Admiral Empedrad. Is there a clear downward trend in terms of seafarer contracts deployment? If the Russia-Ukraine-Euro con conflict continues, will there be lesser or greater opportunities or threats for Filipino global seafarers? Yeah, ma, thank you for that question, Lynn. Uh, there is no clear downward, but there is a clear upward uh, trend, I believe. Um, based on the report of our licensed manning agencies, uh, they're receiving more uh, demand of demand of Filipino seafarers all over the world. Uh, as I said, the Russia-Ukraine uh, conflict is an opportunity for us because 15% uh, of uh, officers are coming from this country. And so it's an opportunity for us. What, what is the threat to the Filipino global seafarers? I believe uh, the main threat is the ambulance chasing. That's why we are coming up with a program to, um, to address the ambulance chasing because uh, if this will not be addressed, this is uh, the major threat to uh, our uh, Filipino seafarers more uh, than the EMSA thing. Uh, I believe we will be able to address the EMSA. We are working very hard, but uh, the ambulance chasing is a significant, a very significant uh, issue of our uh, Filipino seafarers. And, um, and the second question of uh, what would be the priority program of uh, 
to be sustained by the Marcos administration. Well, this is very uh, complicated um, because if you talk about maritime industry, you're not just talking about seafaring industry. You talk about domestic ships, uh, you talk about uh, shipbuilding capability and, um, and um, without uh, the ship, without the shipyard um, uh, and, and uh, it's interrelated. So I believe uh, there are uh, programs that uh, we are uh, studying right now in the Maritime Industry Authority, like, for example, expanding our uh, Filipino flag registry. Uh, because if you expand, uh, if many foreign vessels will uh, register in the Philippine flag, uh, immediately uh, there will be the, the crew will be made of, will be composed of uh, Filipino seafarers. And um, if they will register in the Philippines, then uh, they have to undergo repairs in our uh, shipyards that will make our shipyard very profitable. And um, at the same time, um, uh, this is an opportunity for uh, our students of uh, the maritime higher education. If there are more ships that will register in the Philippines, then they uh, we can um, uh, request or uh, direct the ships to uh, to accommodate training of our cadets for OBT. So there are many uh, opportunities that uh, we can get from expanding our uh, flag registry. So so I hope that um, I always believe that the future of our country is uh, uh, lie very much on the maritime industry development. Uh, if, we, if we develop our maritime industry, then um, uh, I believe um, it will uh, help very much in uh, the economic progress of our country. So Sana, I hope that the next president will focus on the maritime industry rather than um, just uh, focusing on the um, development of the infrastructure of the land or maybe the air, but we should develop the infrastructure of our uh, maritime um, uh, domain, our uh, the ports, um, and uh, the other aspect of the industry. Before we go to the next question, uh, maybe we can also ask the uh, same question to Captain uh, Freddy and uh, Mr. Babera regarding the impact of uh, the geopolitical crisis in uh, Europe and Russia on the employment of our seafarers. Yeah, thanks, Lynn. It's, it's uh, actually a very good question. And uh, obviously, uh, there is an impact, uh, not Im immediately uh, at a large scale, but it's uh, growing as long as this war continues. Uh, of course, in the beginning, everybody was hoping that it will not take that long. Um, there is, there is, however, a challenge so that I am um, uh, very openly uh, sharing my opinion here in this forum. The challenge is the number of qualified senior officers position in specific type of ships. We're talking about large tankers, uh, larger vessels, where the uh, number of um, Filipino uh, senior officers is relatively small in, in the industry in comparison to the Russians and to the Ukrainians. Uh, so perhaps this is this is a good sign for, for all of us in the industry who are involved in the uh, uh, training and the uh, qualification of the Filipino seafarers to think also more about their career path. Uh, it's not enough to have a COC, uh, but also uh, it's very important to that the Filipino seafarers officers, uh, they, they should be ambitious and working towards uh, promotions and getting higher positions and work on larger vessels, more challenging ships uh, on top positions. Uh, to achieve that, um, there is also a lot of background work which is needed, uh, like improving the high uh, school education, uh, looking at the um, more of uh, specialized uh, um, subjects in the curriculum of the maritime academies, uh, and of course, specialized training uh, and specialized training centers uh, in, uh, in, within the um, private sector or, or even public sector, if, if that's um, the case. Uh, so that, this is um, the opportunities are, are there, as uh, uh, as Vice uh, Admiral Impetrad said. However, uh, the quick gains are more on on the lower ranks. But uh, we hope in the future to see the Philippines capable to also replace the senior ranks. Mr. Babera, please. Thank you, Lynn. Um, 
two points. First is um, regarding the issue of uh, the Ukraine Russia. Um, OSM has established a help hub in Cyprus office to address the Ukrainian seafarers. They, they are still colleagues anyway, and they are our seafarers as well, so that they can um, we can help facilitate uh, their return to the country or their next employment. But then the challenge of uh, replacing the Ukrainians and the Russians by the Filipino seafarers um, is there, uh, just like what Captain Fadi mentioned, that uh, definitely we have the supply, but the match of the requirements uh, is, is not really fully met. For the ratings, yes. In OSM, we have been uh, taking over several vessels now, uh, previously manned by Ukrainians and Russians, but only for junior officers in ratings. But for the senior officers, um, we have to really match the, the requirements being uh, sought by the ship owners uh, in terms of size, trades, experience in trade, um, and uh, of course the certificates uh, uh, required for uh, the specific vessels, type of vessels, experience. So we have uh, already proposed that, of course, training certification will be part of developing the junior officers to becoming senior officers, but it will not happen tomorrow or in the next months. But it's uh, um, a partnership with the owners, the employers, and the seafarers that we all want to, uh, to do it together uh, so it will be easier and achievable. So uh, I think that um, the, the Marina's support here is actually by um, providing um, all these uh, facilities that have been mentioned earlier, like uh, the, the issuance of the digital uh, certificates um, and, and uh, helping in, in uh, the opening ports for to change uh, so that we can um, replace or use our superiors uh, to replace the uh, Ukrainians and Russians uh, in, in the coming future. Admiral Empedrad, your response? Yeah, of course, uh, we, we continue to uh, engage our uh, stakeholders um, if there are issues and problems. And uh, it, it's different now. Um, when we have problems, the, the stakeholders, the maritime stakeholders and Marina work together to come up with the, a, a wonderful solution. Example, the vaccination program of our seafarers. Uh, before it's a uh, turtle paced uh, movement of uh, the vaccination. Uh, but when we work together with our stakeholders the, um, in, in two months, three months times, or, or three months uh, time, all, almost 100% of our seafarers were vaccinated, not only, uh, but, but even booster. Of course, uh, Amosup is, uh, is a part of that. Uh, the uh, LGU of uh, Las Piñas uh, and other LGUs all over the country. It, it's, a, it's an all of nation uh, working together. And that's what we are doing right now. Uh, when we have issues, uh, we work together. We come up uh, with uh, new uh, policies uh, that will uh, enhance uh, the way we do things for the betterment of the maritime industry, particularly our Filipino seafarers. Uh, and uh, in fact, tomorrow will be the day of our seafarers. And, uh, and uh, for the first time, uh, because in pandemic, we did, we did not uh, swore their oath uh, after the passing the exam, but tomorrow we will do that uh, nationwide and everybody's involved here. So again, um, if there are issues, uh, it, it's different now. We are working together and uh, we, we do our wonderfully, wonderful things together. Uh, and, and that's, uh, um, that's the way we do things um, during my term as the administrator. Well, uh, we do not want to capitalize on really on the misery of others. We have to really sympathize with our brothers and sisters in Ukraine and Russia. And because they have, uh, I mean, this is uh, unprecedented really what, we, what, we're, what is happening right now. But then again, we have to fill a gap. We have to fill that void 
where there are we that where there are officers and seafarers who have to be deployed really so i think it is our role really in the world in the in the scheme of things that uh, we have to fill really this gap and hopefully uh, the 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 whatever is happening or the incursions that's been happening there will uh, end soon soon sooner not later really and uh, we really pray and sympathize for our brothers and sisters especially the our seafarers who have been displaced or have been lost and we have been in contact with them and we have been helping them uh, recently for the, for the time being so hopefully uh, this will uh, this will pass and we shall go by with our our business uh, business again but uh, we at the Amusub also with our Maritime Academy of Asia and the Pacific, we are trying our best really to have competent uh, sea, seafarer, seafarer officers who have the proper knowledge, attitude and skills really so that they can take on the world's fleet, the world's ocean glowing fleet. And I believe that uh, we have been quite successful really in uh, doing it. With regards to the vaccination, uh, Jay, I'm sure Jay will uh, side with me in saying that we love it long and hard <laughs> so that we can get vaccines and um, make the make seafarers uh, priority A1. But uh, I think a lot of kudos should go to Admiral Empedrad because they were the ones, Marina was the one who facilitated to giving us the thousands of vaccines to be given uh, to, the, to our seafarers. Ano lang kami? Taga, taga inject lang kami. <laughs> taga turok lang kami. I'm sorry, Captain Prady. We're just uh, the people injecting the <laughs> injecting the vaccines, and all the supply was given by Admiral and Pedrad. So thank you very much. It was a wonderful effort. You can see that uh, when it's a tripartite effort. When you see that, um, I can't stop saying this <laughs> because if it's a tripartite effort, when management labor and government work together we can move mountains and we could and we could and we saw this with the um, we saw this with the vaccination program so thank you very much admiral and for that and uh, thank you also captain uh, Prady, because and also to Austin because you also gave a lot of um, donations from the vaccines that you that you procured privately and uh, as i said we were just the ones who Tomorrow, lang kami. <laughs> we were just the ones who uh, administered the vaccines. But without the supply, we, we couldn't have done anything really. So I think, uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully we can, everything will uh, run smoothly from now on. And uh, hopefully, as I said, uh, more uh, deployment will be coming in the future, especially for uh, Filipino officers, really. Because sometimes the problem is uh, there is no opportunity for Filipino officers really to be promoted and hopefully that uh, uh, we, we can we can see that they can be promoted uh, in the near future and uh, again I'd like to thank Captain Freddy for, for uh, employing Filipino seafarers it's really a big uh, it's really a big help to our us our family our families the seafarers our, and especially our economy and their families so thank you very much uh, I cannot thank anybody. I, I, I cannot thank enough everybody enough for all the efforts that you've been doing for our Filipino seafarers. And so, as you said, uh, tomorrow is the day of the seafarer. So share your stories, right? <laughs> so again, happy day of the seafarer. For happy day of the seafarer. Thank you very much, Lim. Let's continue our dialogue. Uh, still, a question from a uh, UP professor uh, Noy Amante about uh, the. Department of Migrant Workers. What is the role of Marina in relation to the new Department of uh, Migrant Workers in terms of seafarer welfare and regulatory measures such as certification? Yeah, that's a good question. Actually, uh, when you talk about moral and welfare of our uh, Filipino seafarers, uh, that's the role of the OWA. So when we receive some complaints uh, about the seafarers, then uh, we, we relay it to the OWA because they are the main uh, 
uh, agency that will look into the welfare of our Filipino seafarers. Uh, our role here is to uh, provide the competence, uh, the standards that is uh, compliance to the STC, STCW convention, making sure that when we give the certificates uh, to our seafarers, um, it, it is a well-deserved uh, certificates that is um, uh, compliant to the standard of the code. So again, um, uh, we, we hope we can actively uh, really involve uh, in, in uh, addressing concerns of the morale of our Filipino seafarers. But uh, again, that's the role of OWA. Uh, but we continue to provide them um, uh, morale boosting uh, um, policies and programs like the, uh, um, uh, the CRP, uh, the vaccination program. Uh, you know, vaccination program, that's not the job of Marina. Uh, but uh, we did that uh, without, without any budget. Uh, just a coordination and a working with the uh, stakeholders. Uh, it's not the mandate of Marina, but we help. And uh, it's a fairy tale program. Uh, it's a fairy tale project of the Maritime Industry Authority. So um, we will continue to look uh, on, on the morale of the seafarers. Like, for example, we are planning to build a condo tell. It, it did not materialize yet. But we will push with that, coming up with a condotel, uh, maybe a 500 uh, room um, available for our seafarers when they go to Manila and do their training. Um, and then uh, they pay 500 for uh, fully air-conditioned uh, rooms. So that, that's still in the program for, uh, of the marina. And the other one is we are coming up with a foundation, a foundation that will look into the welfare of our Filipino seafarers. Example, if uh, some of them died uh, while at sea, then uh, we will uh, provide uh, educational benefits to their uh, uh, children. Uh, and, and maybe the government will provide house and lot benefits to them, just like what they are doing, what we are doing in, the, in, in our soldiers who are uh, uh, killed in action in the field. So, so these are programs that uh, really should be the uh, role of the OWA, but we are helping out to. Uh, make our uh, seafarers very happy. Question from Hob. Maybe any, uh, anyone from the panelists could answer this. Do we have official maximum number of months of stay on board uh, as most of the countries are opening now? Is 14 months is still allowed as long as all documents are valid? Captain Freddy? Well, to answer at least from uh, from our side, uh, there is no no seafarer should be fourteen months on board. That's that's obviously no no not acceptable. And uh, th these were moments where crew changes were not possible at all, which is not the case today. Uh, so definitely today there should be no seafarer who is uh, fourteen months on board, and the maximum duration is eleven months, and uh, people uh, should uh, should be relieved because. It does not only affect the regulation, but it affects them as as persons, as uh, as people, uh, their mental health, their morale, their health in general. Uh, so the uh, we as as a ship management management company, but also together with our uh, partners as charters, ship owners, uh, we we do a lot of efforts, and uh, sometimes we have to deviate ships and to do expensive crew changes and um, just to release the crew. Because uh, if the crew are tired, this is also unsafe to the vessel. But I, I fully understand that was a period, but I think that period is now almost over in the majority of the areas of the world. There are only few areas in the world, perhaps China is one of them, which, which, are, uh, which remain extremely difficult. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, it's up to the uh, flag administration and the uh, port state control authorities in each country to assess uh, whether this is acceptable or not, where, where there are exemptions. Question from uh, Mr. Eloy Kalimoso of uh, Seaway Magazine. Uh, good afternoon to all, to Captain Fradi. Have you conducted crew change in the Philippines? How cost effective it is compared to other ports, say Singapore or any European ports? Yeah, of course, we conduct crew change in the Philippines. I, th I think every one of us these days have had a look at the flight costs. Uh, if you planned any holidays or you've planned any business travel or whatever it is the reason or, or even dispatching seafarers, uh, you might have noted that 
prices are really special these days. And, uh, and of course, if you do crew change with uh, 80% or 100% of your crew are Filipino seafarers, obviously Manila sounds to be a very economic place to do the crew change. Uh, yeah, we've done crew changes in in uh, in uh, Manila and uh, in uh, generally in, in the Philippines, and they are very effective. But of course, it depends on uh, case to case where the ship is coming from, and so it's it's a bit more complicated than just the the question itself. But generally, I would say yes. Mr. Babera, any rejoinder or? Uh... Yeah, I, I can fully support what Captain Pradi uh, has shared. We uh, also experienced um, having crew change in Manila, in Port of Manila, and in some other ports in the Philippines. Um, mainly for full crew Filipino vessels because of, uh, of course, the consideration on uh, cost of flights. Um, so I think that if we have this kind of option doing uh, this um, crew change in, in Philippine ports and we, with, with close coordination also with uh, the local agents, with the, the, the various agencies uh, locally, then it's definitely a yes for us also to have to change in, in the Philippines. So if we only have one or uh, three crew, uh, then we can do that uh, somewhere else, except for uh, China. And uh, so far, as, as part of our uh, key performance indicators in the organization, we measure the uh, relief on time of the seafarers, even during pandemic. And we have not... Uh, so far, reach up to eight, uh, more than 11 months. Any seafarer who has reached more than 11 months in, in the fleet. Um, but we have seafarers who have been in a quarantine facility before being sent home for more than four months. So they have already disembarked the vessel, but they stayed in port for four months because they cannot find um, flight uh, going back to Manila. So that was uh, so far uh, the, the most challenging um, experience that we had. Thanks, Lynn. Our participants are reacting. Uh, yeah. Hob, uh, from Hob, agree port use agency fees representation is too high. A reaction from Gilbert Cabrera, cheaper for joining, but port use and boat launches are very expensive in the Philippines. Yeah, uh, may, may I comment to that? Yes, please, uh, in, uh, Administrator. Yeah. I think the only solution to this is to strengthen the one-stop shop concept, uh, meaning uh, when, when ships do crew change here, they should be talking to only one agency or one stop or one shop um, rather than talking to so many people and so many agencies that uh, you know, increase the, um, the chances of uh, uh, corruption maybe and um, a higher juice. So uh, if there is one-stop shop and uh, determines uh, what uh, are to be charged uh, for doing crew change? Maybe we can improve, uh, and and hopefully that uh, we can uh, work together. We can we can discuss this uh, because we have twelve. We uh, they open the Kurimao port now, so we have twelve uh, ports right now. But if we um, look into the the payments, the the fees, uh, and um, and uh, come up with a standard. Um, and uh, only uh, to be done by a, uh, one shop, not, not uh, different agencies. Maybe we can improve uh, uh, our, uh, the, the, the conduct of crew chains in our country. Still from Marina, uh, Captain Jeffrey Solon also reacted. Let us see with the next DOTR secretary and GM of PPA. We will take this up. All right. Uh, other questions? Actually, this is not a question, but uh, a message for uh, uh, Administrator Empedrad. Your leadership provides hope in these trying times. Thank you for emerging towards a greater future. From Renante Asuncion. And uh, hats off to Marina for the continuous improvement, which really help our Filipino seafarers. Uh, question from Fabricio. Masuchi, what about the human factor? Are you working on such aspect during training sessions of Filipino officers and crew? Anyone from the panelists? Okay, Captain Freddy, please. 
Yeah, I can answer to that, Lynn, quickly, of course. Uh, so, yeah, definitely the human factor is, is, is not a new uh, question. So it's, it's, been, uh, it's been a matter where, where we tried uh, and the industry tried several solutions. We, we've been also looking at what the other industries do, like um, in aviation or medicine or, or, or even uh, general solutions from, uh, from, the, from the market. Uh, yeah, the human element is extremely important. Uh, it is extremely important also to to train people how to work together in uh, uh, in uh, more of diverse environment, more of inclusive environment. Uh, we we have also to tackle now new uh, challenges and new issues like bullying, like harassment. Um, so the, the, these are a lot of uh, cultural education which uh, which we need to provide now to our uh, to our crew, uh, and we want them to work in a very healthy uh, environment. And especially that uh, we have um, increased the, uh, the diversity on board our ships, and we have an increasing number of uh, female cadets as well on our ships. Uh, so yeah, the world is changing, and the human element. As a word, remain the same, but the content is also changing, and, and uh, we have to tackle too many uh, new things, which we are doing. I'm sure all the industry is doing, and as Colombia, we are working very hard on that as well. Thank you. Yes, Lynn, if I can add, uh, yes, it's very heartwarming to know that uh, ship managers like Colombia is uh, is tackling really this issue on the human factor and the human element, because as a labor union, we have to. Uh, protect the rights of our seafarers, their welfare. And uh, yeah, that's why, as I said, it's very heartwarming to know that a big company like Columbia is tackling this issue. And I hope that uh, you continue tackling it. And uh, it's very, really, very hard, especially for us and in the, in the ITF, because we have, as you said, bullying, harassment, criminalization, uh, extended working hours and everything. And there are a lot of, there's a myriad of factors really that uh, come into this picture. And, uh, and that's good that uh, our uh, good uh, ship managers like Columbia are tackling this issue. Thank you very much, Lynn. Perhaps Mr. Babera could, could also Thank you, add. Lynn. So, certainly, it's uh, um, one of the focus of uh, the organization um, because, uh, in fact, we have uh, targeted a KPI um, to increase also the number of uh, female workers on board. Uh, this is also in recognition of uh, OSN's uh, global uh, target, which is 60-40 uh, in fact now that we have 60% female workers uh, in the whole organization and 40% uh, male workers. And uh, diversity is definitely um, part of uh, our organization. That's why uh, human element is uh, one of the focus in terms of training development, not only for ship, but also for shore employees, so that we are aligned and we, are, we can deal with the same situation, the same concern. Um, if we, wherever department we are assigned, we know that this is what we what is important and what we also have to deal with. So uh, I think that across the, the, the uh, uh, industry, uh, this is definitely being attended. Thanks. Before I move to another question, uh, here's a message for uh, Administrator Empedrad from Marites Bagunas. Please stay in, Marina Administrator Bob. <laughs> um, question from uh, Fabricio. Costs of light from, from and to Manila are increased too in last two weeks. Your, any reaction on this? Yeah, with the rise in oil prices, gasoline, everything, costs are, it's an cost push inflation. Mm -hmm. Costs are really uh, going up. And not only, I believe not only in shipping, but also in the air industry, air industry transport. The whole transport industry will realize, which relies really on uh, gas, gas and fuel. So it's, uh, it's really obvious that a lot, of, uh, a lot of things are increasing right now. Captain Freddy. Hi, thank you. Captain Freddy, uh, how, how does uh, the, the cost in uh, flights uh, affect your uh, proving or ship manager? Oh yeah, ob obviously the flight costs are, are, uh, are getting uh, really uh, too high in, in certain uh, sectors. 
and, and routes. But of course, we have to keep the business going, and uh, we can't. This is not gonna stop uh, the, from doing crew changes or whatever. We are not going to jeopardize, let's say, the crew changes because the flights are expensive. But it is it is the case, and. Uh, uh, we've seen it, uh, especially with uh, with the Russian seafarers, where Russia, for example, is under sanctions and only a few airlines uh, can take Russian seafarers. Uh, but for the Filipino seafarers, it's there is an increase, but still uh, still manageable. Uh, but but it's it's a global it's a global situation. It's it's affecting all of us, uh, affecting obviously also our uh, customers, clients, and ship owners. Um, so uh, we just hope that uh, the situation will stabilize at one point, but at, at, as it seems now, it continues to be a challenge. Another question from Hob: can we also provide booster shots to Filipino seafarers calling Philippine ports? BOQ do not allow our crew to disembark for booster shots. Maybe health authorities can board vessels calling Philippine waters and provide booster shots. Administrator Empedrad? Yeah, we'll try to coordinate this one with BOQ. Uh, B, BOQ may have uh, some uh, protocols in, in doing this, but uh, certainly we can uh, coordinate with them. Let, let's see what we can do on uh, this one. Um, but they have protocols that we have to follow also. So um, we don't have a BOQ representative here, but uh, I took down of your comments and we will uh, raise this to our uh, counterparts in BOQ. Thank you. From Captain Abelardo Pacheco, there are variables that need to be addressed. Our trading area should be encouraging, which means we need cargoes to handle from within and to any safe port. We can likewise liberalize our policies to encourage shippers to relocate to the country as a shipping hub. Then we can readily crew changes or do crew changes. I still believe the higher level of assessment is imperative in drawing plans for the future. How would you react on this, uh, Administrator Empedrad? You're muted, sir, sorry. Well, that's that's very true. Um, the, there are many variables that, that need to be addressed. Um, but um, uh, when you're talking about liberalizing our policies to encourage shippers to relocate to the country, um, uh, we have to work on that. Uh, but uh, the fact that we have opened uh, now 12 crew chains hub for uh, ships to come here and do, do crew chains, uh, to me, that's a, a good uh, response to uh, uh, some most of the ports from other countries uh, closing down. So. As I said in my presentation, if you are passing by in the southern Philippines, so we have a crew chain, we have crew chains hubs there. And when you pass through uh, the northern Philippines, we also have crew chains hubs there. So uh, this will encourage uh, ships from coming here. But the, the main issue here is the expansion of our Philippine flag. Once we uh, expand, once we encourage ships owners from foreign countries to uh, register in the Philippine flag, then uh, this will have uh, a lot of uh, benefits to the maritime industry authority of our country. Perhaps Captain Fadi can react on that, on the expansion of the Philippine regist registry. registry. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, the expertise remains with Marina, of course, and the, uh, the uh, local authorities, but I can only say my opinion uh, from, from distance. Uh, I, I think uh, there are a lot of uh, opportunities in the Philippines. Of course, uh, the uh, improving or modernizing the infrastructure in the ports and so on is, is, is not really as simple as sometimes it seems to be, uh, will attract the shipping, but also there is a regional competition and uh, it's, 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 it's a bit of a study which we need to do here. Uh, but but uh, generally, uh, these strongest point of the Philippines remains the seafarers themselves. And uh, perhaps as um, as the um, uh, Marina administration is looking at the, the uh, registry of, of the flag, which which is a very ambitious project. And I, I, I think there is a future there. But for the moment, the strongest point of the Philippines are the seafarers. And uh, it is extremely vital for us that that does not stop does not get affected, but whatever happens, I think we should learn lessons from these uh, conflicts which are happening from COVID, uh, from the uh, natural disasters, 
uh, and we need to look at uh, how much we can uh, work around the resilience of uh, this industry, of uh, the maritime industry in the Philippines, uh, how, what can be prepared for so that there is always uh, a Filipino seafarers can always go on board their ships and, uh, you know, make their lives and also support the worldwide uh, global uh, supply chain as well. Very interesting and uh, meaningful uh, perspectives. May I, add, may I add to that, uh, uh, sure. Lynn? May I add to that, Lynn? Um, you know, it's not just uh, the maritime industry. We should be able to come up with a good infrastructure um, that will connect our ports to, to the market. So uh, you're talking about um, moving the, the supplies uh, by sea. And when they end in port, uh, the, the, the main issue here is how do we speed up the uh, transport of these goods to the market? So you, you should come up not only with the infrastructure of uh, the maritime, but even um, uh, in, in, uh, in our road networks, uh, there should be accessibility uh, for our uh, goods and supplies um, uh, to go to the market. Example, in, in the port of Marina, Manila, uh, where uh, the trucks are moving and uh, you know, uh, the traffic is too heavy. And so the movement of the cargoes through the market it makes it more expensive now for our uh, for our goods. So may maybe we need to improve our infrastructure uh, from to access our supplies from the port to the market. So I, I think uh, we should focus on that as well. We are now on the final part of our program for your our wrap ups, uh, but. Uh... I think I should read this first. SID, SRB Online was almost full. Can you give good advice to accommodate seafarers' needs for the company's requirements? From Limwell Tahonera. Yes, Rator. You're muted, sir. Yes, uh, we have some issues now as far as the SID and uh, SRB is concerned. But we, we came up with a policy right now that if your uh, SIRB is still current, you don't have to apply for SID. Uh, so we, uh, because of the problem of the chips, the, uh, we are still awaiting for the supplies. But once we receive this one, and we can uh, provide now for everybody else. But uh, as of now, um, those who are uh, uh, ready to be deployed within a week, uh, we need to uh, facilitate or uh, expedite their uh, applications of the SID. Uh, so we can we can uh, address that um, those who are leaving soon, but for the, those who are not leaving yet and uh, they have current SIRB, um, we we came up with an advisory that they have, don't have to apply for SID as yet. So uh, we will wor we are working very hard to um, to get the supplies so that we can open up again the uh, application of our SID. Before his wrap up. Uh... May we hear again from our panelists your message for our seafarers on this day of the seafarer. Let's start with Dr. Conrad Aka. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Lynn, for inviting us. And we'd like to greet our seafarers. Uh, a happy day of the seafarer. Uh, and uh, share your story, as the IMO said. <laughs> share your stories. And, and if I may, for uh, lastly, uh, Lynn, because we were talking about uh, the Philippine, the Philippine flag, right? So I hope also that uh, we do not fall into the trap that the Philippine flag becomes a flag of convenience. So we have to have that uh, the infrastructure, everything involved. And we have to really set up and think about it uh, very clearly. So that's my parting word. <laughs> Those are my parting words. And again, uh, happy day of the seafarer. And uh, thank you very much, Vice Admiral Empedrad, for all the efforts you've been doing so far in uh, in making the Filipino seafarer the, the best in the world. Thank you very much. And I'd like to th thank also Captain Fran Franny and uh, Jay for uh, being with us tonight. And also, Lynn, thank you very much for inviting us. Again, happy day of the seafarer. Mabuhay po ang Pilipinong Mandaragat. Mr. Jay Babera, please. Thank you, Lynn. First of all, um, my smartest salute to all our Filipino seafarers out there, uh, both on board and on shore. Uh, you, you are definitely um, making uh, the world uh, move with all your efforts there. Um, this is our industry. 
So I encourage everyone, whatever your role is in this industry, be part and join uh, the industry in improving, uh, suggesting, and be part of the solution so that we will all be able to uh, move forward together successfully. Um, in OSM, as uh, a crew management, uh, we are all in full support uh, to whatever our uh, agencies, particularly Marina, will also be uh, doing to improve our industry. Thank you, uh, Admiral Embedrad, uh, to fellow uh, panelists, Dr. Oka, Captain Fadi, and of course, to you, Lynn, and to the rest of our viewers. Thank you. Captain Fauzi Fadi, please. Yeah, thanks, uh, Lynn, again, and uh, thanks to all. I, I would also like uh, to start first thanking uh, uh, Vice Admiral uh, Indrad and uh, also Dr. Oka and uh, Jay and uh, all the uh, the uh, all this uh, all the uh, colleagues who are um, following us and uh, listening to us. I I think there is very few things which we didn't say yet to the seafarers. We told them, thank you. We told them everything. Uh, the, the last thing I, I want to tell to all our seafarers, but not only, I mean, by ours, by Colombia, I mean, the whole world seafarers, but especially the Filipino seafarers, I want to tell them nothing is impossible to, to have the confidence uh, to continue progressing and uh, to work very hard uh, to, to, to really become and continue to be uh, the leading uh, nation, nation uh, seafaring nation in the world. And uh, I, I can guarantee all my personal support and all the support of my company, uh, also uh, to the administration and to everyone contributing uh, to these efforts. Thank you. Before I give the floor to Vice Admiral Empedrad, let me uh, uh, read some of the messages from our participants for administrator. Thank you, Vice Admiral Robert Empadrad, for handling Marina a lot of good changes in maritime sector. Congrats, Marina Administrator Empadrad and Captain Solon. Filipino seafarers are really happy with the new initiatives offered to Filipino seafarers. It's not a salute, sirs. We congratulate the candid policy of Marina in motivating other stakeholders to step up. Thank you very much, Vice Admiral, for clear information. Your wrap up, please, Administrator Empadrad. Well, I am humbled by the comments of uh, our uh, listeners and watchers. Uh, uh, my congratulations to our Filipino seafarers. Uh, tomorrow is the day of the seafarers. You know, we consider them our modern day heroes. Uh, if not for them, the supplies, the medical, uh, our, our medicines, our uh, PPE cannot uh, arrive uh, and cannot uh, say, I think um, they were uh, significant in providing um, in, and reducing the debt during the, the COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, this is all I can say to our Filipino seafarers. I salute you. And if we call you our modern day heroes, we should provide you our selfless service. And that's we are, what we are doing in Marina right now. We are coming up with a lot of programs um, to look into the welfare of our Filipino seafarers. That's our main goal. Our main goal is to make sure that we will continue to be the number one country that produces uh, manpower. And yes, uh, we will do more in um, capacitating our uh, seafarers uh, to, to, is to go higher uh, to the ladder of leadership in, in the ships um, uh, all over the world. Uh, so again, uh, we will continue to pray for you. Um, God bless all our Filipino seafarers. And uh, thank you, Lynn, for uh, inviting us. Thank you to the panels. Uh, God bless us all. Administrator Robert M. Pedrad, our primary guest. Sincere thanks also to our distinguished panelists, Dr. Conrad Oka, President, Associated Marine Officers and Siemens Union of the Philippines, AMUSU. Mr. Jay Babera, Vice President, OSM Philippines Crewing Operations and Captain Fauzi Fradi, Group Director, Crewing and Training, Columbia Ship Management Limited, and sincerest thanks to our sponsors. Thank you, everyone. Salamat po. See you again on our next webinars. Happy Day of the Seafarers. Mm -hmm.